guys. How are you? I came to talk to Wedge. This is Dan Haight. Hey, Dan. We, talk, we talked about you earlier today. Did you? I know. Yeah. I am such a jerk, dude. I told You told me you had <laughs> to call him at 1030, and here it is mm-hmm. after 11. Yeah, we were talking about how when you called last time, I actually completely forgot that you were going to call in that day. <laughs> and so we... we with us? I, that, that's why we're, we're soulmates. That's that, what it is. That's why he's called. I know. We're just busy forgetting each other. It's terrible. That's why he called in late. He was like, yeah, I heard you talking about me, fucker. I heard. I know. So, I'm just that's why I'm calling now. No, I, I, waited, I, I waited for you not to call. Um, if anyone doesn't know. for you, man. <laughs> if anyone doesn't know or if they're uh, just tuning in, Dan Haight is a uh, – he's not a hateful man. He's the man who wrote the book Flotilla, which I actually thoroughly enjoyed. I enjoyed your book, sir. Golf clap for you, sir. Thank you. And uh, you're currently working on your next book? Uh, I got, well, let's see, I got two. Two of them are coming out this year. So we got the short story collection that's coming out as we speak. And then the uh, sequel to Iron, to uh, Flotilla is called Iron Mountain. That's coming in, uh, let's see, hopefully by the end of August. Just in time for Labor Day. Okay, so it's not too far away because the way you left the end of Flotilla, I was just like, you son of a bitch. I was gonna, I was gonna call you up and curse you out myself. I was, I was so pissed I off. I'm like, I need this. Is taking shape. Yeah, I'm like, this thing needs a hundred more pages. <laughs> Thank you. I, was, ju- I got you. It was, it was a really good book, and uh, I, I mentioned earlier that the book wasn't necessarily written specifically for someone of my age or of my, uh, I guess, rotten of a brain, but it's, it, it, it's a really good story about a, um, I guess, a younger version of me. <laughs> Yeah, and me. It's um, yeah. It it it's it starts the way it starts out, and every I don't want to give anything away. Uh, granted, I'll it's buy been out. Give it away. I mean, like you. Okay, you well, can this read is what the, happened the at first this... five chapters online, anyway. So it's not like you're gonna okay. worry about that too much. But like, what I was surprised about because you said it was a uh, it was a post apocalyptic type like uh, science fiction novel on the ocean. It's a science fiction novel. It's a novel about a kid who's growing up at the end of the world. It is it, essentially it's a crossover fiction novel. Oh, it's right? a pre-apocalyptic. Yeah, exactly. And so I'm That's like, you know, it's hard to go. How are you going to categorize this? Okay, well, you know, it is science fiction. Don't get me wrong, it is science fiction. Okay, but it's also the story about this kid who's growing up, and it's also about this kid who has to kind of overcome some challenges. And as you said, and by the way, I got to congratulate you. I love that hashtag. Bad dads make good books. <laughs> I, I was totally thinking of radio flyers. I was actually, I was actually on the phone with a, a um, radio show in the UK earlier today, mm-hmm. and we were talking about that. And I mentioned you, oh, just because you. I thought that was just you captured something that I just could not get. <laughs> I appreciate that. Because like the story is weird. It's it's a story of a of a kid and his dad, and he um, getting like getting to know your father when he was so far away from you to begin with. And then mm-hmm. having to get away from where you you're comfortable, just to get to know this guy. Yeah, it's uh, it's it, it's really selfish of him. <laughs> exactly. It's completely well, selfish I mean, of that's, him. The, that's kind of the whole point of it. Um, I don't know how you grew up. I you know I think we talked about this a little bit. But mm-hmm. if you come from a background of dysfunction, uh, you know your folks, you know really really needed to take some parenting classes, but didn't because they weren't even aware that they had a problem. Mm. They were just glad, you know, they were like, well, I'm not beating you with an iron hot poker like the way I grew up, so you must be fine, right? Yeah, that's pretty much how that And so out. Sometimes it's well deserved, You know, you, you, you come from that that's background, you try to explain it. Um, I had a friend of mine, we were, ta- we were comparing notes about that topic, and he goes, yeah, I think we came from the laziest generation of parents in history. They didn't owe their parents anything, and they didn't owe their children anything. Mm, that's a really good like, way of okay, putting all right, it. Well, I can't argue with that one. Because you have you have uh, the, the a bunch of these uh, these parents out there saying that this generation is so horrible and they're the ones who raised them. Yeah, I know. Well, it's that's that's I think every every generation throws a hero up the pop charts that's when it comes to too. it. But you know, I I don't want it to be this downer of you know Horatio Alger type. You know, a little boy makes good in the twentieth first <laughs> century kind of thing because it could be so schmaltzy and lame. Mm-hmm. I mean, think about this one. How easy could it have been to just turn that book into a lifetime movie, right? Oh, it would have been By so easy. Some crucial points out. Actually, the biggest thing, so the, the easy, the the way to make it uh, into that, the easiest way is instead of him being on the flotilla, you change it into a dude ranch. And then you hey. would have had Louis Sakar's uh, holes, <laughs> right? <laughs> Maybe you throw in a couple Indians. They tell some tales. They make moccasins, and then the movie's over. 
I know, really. <laughs> somewhere, ro- somewhere, Rose It'd O'Donnell so makes an appearance. Yeah, but I mean, I, well, tell me, I'll tell you what, you know retarded. what, let's do, let's do something fun. It'll be good radio. All tell right. me honestly, did you enjoy this novel? Do you really think it was relevant? No, I did. I, I really enjoyed okay. it. Um, and it, when you say relevance, it doesn't... I'm, be, I'm asking you to be brutal. Come on. No, I, I would be. I would be. Okay. And, and if I didn't right. enjoy it, I would be like, right. I, yeah, okay. Like, no, why, why would I finish a book you, that I didn't want to like, read? Let's do some good radio for a second. <laughs> Not that you don't already, but let's just do some good radio real quick. I'm inviting you as the author. Did my novel suck? Don't be PR. Don't do a fluff piece. Tell me, did it suck? I can honestly say, and I read a lot of books, I've never even heard of it until today. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't read it. Um, I've heard a little bit about it. It sounds... Get it, thee behind me, Satan! <laughs> <laughs> no, it does sound interesting to me. Cause I've, I've read a lot of um, books that are, you know, I guess you'd say geared more towards the uh, younger, because I mean, mm-hmm. I'm almost 30 myself. And they're really good. They, you know, they have the means behind them, but they still have, like, the action, you know, mm-hmm. young, young adult books that are geared towards the male and has life lessons to learn in as well without it being... Yeah, but I didn't want to, like, wallop you in the face with that. No, yeah. wait, wait, like, the well, attitude that... in this book, the way that, that I read it was that it was, it was a little smarmy about certain things. And it wasn't... It was trying to be, a, like, get Smart. away from being... Um, like going in that typical realm of what like books like this tend to be where it's like it's a young man coming into his own. It was a young kid who needs a kick in the ass. That's what it is. Uh, well, no, oh, that, yeah. that happens a lot, though, in you know books about you know the coming of age. Mm-hmm. But you can have a cool coming of age story without it being a Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants crap. <laughs> so Yeah, and that, see, that's the other thing that I absolutely did not want to get. I'm going to tell you a story about Sisterhood of Traveling Pants as long as you mentioned it. Now that you brought it up, we need to talk about this. Yeah, well, that's, that's just, that's just the early to, Yaya Sisterhood, I've right? Tried, yeah, I've tried to oh, avoid God. that <laughs> shit. I'm, I try and avoid that shit. I, I, I hate I'm going to tell you something like about that. that movie. I got stuck. I was flying to Alaska, and I was over the, Bar- or the, 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 uh, Al- you know, the Gulf of Alaska okay. flying to Anchorage. And it's 2 o'clock in the morning on this plane. Nobody can sleep. The plane is shaking like dice in a cup because I guess there's a lot of turbulence over the, over the Gulf of Alaska. Mm-hmm. You know, I, not that I knew. So I'm trying there's to sleep. I took a bunch of melatonin and bourbon. I'm trying to sleep. I cannot sleep. This plane is just rattling me from, you know, toes to elbow. And I'm miserable. I'm out of it. I'm tired. I'm pissed off. And what do you think the in-flight movie was? <laughs> I wanted to kill somebody. It, it, was, a movie, it, was, it was a movie aimed at so helping him go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> how, did, how did the pants fit the fat girl? No, you it's wanna, craziness. I don't even, yeah, really. No, I want to know how the but fuck see, they made a the sequel. Here's the thing that pisses me off about those novels. I don't know if you've noticed this about these novels, about those uh, uh, sh- uh, movies. movies or stories, I should say. But what pisses me off about them are really what they are is this this idiot narrative, this unrealistic narrative. Oh, the girls get along so well, and they're all successful in life in one form or another. One's a film director, <clears throat> one's a writer, one's a photographer, blah, blah, blah. But they all come back together for each other. And I'm just like, oh, give me a break. Which one's the one? On, who's, who's the bully? Who's the bitch? Who's the one who's pregnant? Who's the, one who's, who's who's the, the one who, who's the one who didn't wear underwear that gave everyone herpes? No. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what was that part of the uh, Sisterhood Traveling Pants where she calls up and goes, uh, I got cramps. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't sleep with anybody. I don't know what you had. Did you, like, deodorize these things before you sent them off again? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, first, I can't I stand so I didn't, like I, mm-hmm. yeah, I didn't want, I didn't want Flotilla to be that way, man. It would have it been such a downer yeah. to write a story like that. Oh, yeah, like, why would you sit there and write a story where you're, like, sitting there like, people are going to be so inspired. That's like writing motivational posters. I'm like, who yeah. wants that? Exactly. <laughs> I mean, like, why don't I just go ahead and just, you know, em- you know, write for despair.com and end it all right now. Yeah. Write for God. So, anyway, so that, that was just kind of my thoughts. But, you know, tell me, tell me what you think you want to – tell me what you want to talk about. We'll just go nuts. I don't well, know. like, you asked the question, like, what I thought about, like, like, like – being as brutal as possible and i'm i'm well, not one person who would just like like there there were some little like things in there where i i did feel it should have went a little differently but uh-huh. like off the top of my head right now i can't really think of those specifically because it has that's been a while right. since i, mean, I read you know, them. But, cool. but, but in the end in the end like once i got to the end it 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 did have this good feeling where i was like okay now we're here <laughs> mm-hmm. and now the next step is like you know 
The Sopranos taking a year off, so you have to kind of wait. You know, you have to yeah, wait for this and, to hear what happened with this, and I know it's going to be a good in, while. In that's kind of the journey of getting a, a novel published, unfortunately, mm-hmm. and I kind of had to learn that one the hard way. I think had I understood what I was getting myself into, I would have done a lot more planning mm-hmm. so that I could have spaced the novels together much more closely. But, I like you know, things. a lot of this stuff I was just kind of mm-hmm. learning. You know, the entire process Especially of getting a book published is an odyssey unto itself, but I don't want to bore you. Um, and just, you know, it just really took much more time to get me to that point where I was ready to write the second novel than I expected. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, like, I, like I said before, it, it isn't yeah. geared towards me because if when I'm reading it and I come across certain things, I'm like, a fuck should have been there. A shit <laughs> should have been there. <laughs> a bitch should have been there. Like, that's that's how yeah. I would have written it. Um, think about it this way, dude. I wrote a novel that, that would keep your attention, you wedge, your attention, mm-hmm. and... If you want to give this to your twelve-year-old cousin, it's okay. I have one of those. Well, don't. You can guess. actually give him exactly. some more than a Playboy. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Listen, come here, you. You don't need a smack in the that. face, but I can't do it. No, 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 no. I was talking because his your know, cousin, twelve, coming of age. Hey, now that you're hitting puberty, that's what I say. He can actually give something productive to yeah. his cousin. You're about the time where you're gonna come of age, so you might as well come at your age. Yeah, I, I was Thank saying. You. He, I was yes, saying. I needed that image before I went to <laughs> yeah. sleep. I, I was actually saying which can give him some more productive. There's not enough bleach in the world to get that one out of my head. <laughs> Why would you want to? Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, yeah, I'm sorry. I am sorry i am sorry i did not realize we were calling during child pornography. <laughs> <laughs> Earlier we were talking Wrong about a pedo you. rally. So behave yourself. <laughs> family program. Haven't you noticed Bill Cosby's on that? <laughs> There's always room for Jello. <laughs> mm, I love my uh, I, I, I could keep going with with this, and it's just going to be non-productive. Uh, exactly. The, uh, <laughs> but there's there's one thing that stuck out in my mind. In like yeah. it was it was towards the end. It doesn't ruin anything. But he leaps for the boat or for the deck, and he smacks his face against oh, yeah. the side of the boat, and the like just the. Um, the the writing of that and and uh, the imagery, I that was kind of hard to shake because like loose teeth is the scariest fucking thing. I don't oh, know yeah. why. Oh yeah. No. <laughs> oh yeah. I like that. That 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 actually packed a punch in that. I was like, oh, I I, I literally I was reading it and I went, hmm. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's always amazing to me. See, here's the thing. This is the thing about writing that I find the most, one of the most gratifying things I did not expect to have happen, which was you write something, you throw it out there, and then you come back and people take all kinds of different things. You are, in fact, the first person to even bring that up. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm, I worked on trying to get the action of that correct, and nobody ever said anything about it until this moment. So I was like, oh, okay, nobody, nobody cares. All right, fine. But like when you're deep you know, into you it. You get too upset about it. You're just like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Well, that has but to be you, disappointing. You actually, you actually dug it. Or it actually got on top of you. That's cool. That's why we give you the best interviews, too, so. What's that? I say we give you the best interviews as well, so fuck okay. it. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> well, that is, except for the uh, completely blue material. It's not like I can share this radio show with my grandma. I'm like, <laughs> hey, grandma, I was on the radio. No, no, okay, no. <laughs> I would that, share, that's I'd the share gift. with my grandma. My grandma's a dumb like, like no, that. Thank God he's on grandma. His grandma's got Dr. Kevorkian on speed dial. Jerk. <laughs> <laughs> That's the last thing she hears. My grandma's dead. Uh, 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 I've written you out of my will. <laughs> <laughs> I like how she's on the radio. She's like on like a walkie-talkie. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, I'm sorry. Hold on, hold on. Do you want to do? You want to do? Uh, I was just thinking, grandma, grandma exactly. two grand Here's the thing about my grandma. She sounds drunk, but she never drinks. Oh. Okay. So it's basically like a bad spastic, Catherine Hepburn. Mm. And I said, listen, I don't care if. Your father is a horrible man. He's, you love him. Then I said, listen, I don't care if your grandfather has a stroke. He should still be able to feed those sparrow cats outside. And if he gets bitten, that's okay. <laughs> Honestly, I am sounds like a preacher. I am totally picturing somebody who sits at the dinner table and goes to scoop up peas on the spoon. And they're just shaking so bad by the time they get the spoon in their mouth, there's only one pee left. If you, yeah. if you were only that and lucky, she's like you also have yeah. to factor in the rheumatoid arthritis is taken away her hand function, oh. and she complains oh. all the time. And um, I see, I've seen that for the first time recently. Eating food with the dentures that don't quite fit anymore. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's just oh, sad. Uh. Don't get me wrong. I love my grandma. Don't get, don't get me wrong. Well, who I'm just love telling you. It's, it's almost like, do you guys remember Tard Blog? 
No. 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 Wedge, you're from uh, SA for a while. Do you remember that? God, Not that really. Was yeah. Horrible and funny at the same time. Tard blog. But, uh, somebody, I guess, was a um, teacher for a special ed uh, class in somewhere in the Chicagoland area, and uh, started writing these blog stories about these poor kids and their horrible white trash family. And eventually got outed. Actually, now that I think about it, I think the writer of Tard Blog was a friend of Tucker Max. Mm. And uh, anyway, but long story short, they made a lot of pains to to kind of hide their, uh, you know, hide their names and faces because they needed to be fired in a nanosecond. And I think eventually they were. And so it's, it's kind of like the thing with that. You go, okay, this is a very sad situation, but on some deep, dark level, this is hysterical. Yeah, and you have to laugh because that's all you can do. Well, that's what this show is because, like, this show like, we get in weird places where I'll I'll get into this. Oh, like, I'm talking. Me, I know. Like, like, oh, I know. We well, we get really blue, but at the same time, there's other times where I get so ramped up by what we're talking about. Like, I'm yelling about people's rights and what they deserve, and 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 as far as I know, I'm a hundred percent right all the time, and so. <laughs> And I'm going at this. You and don't I'm, have a girlfriend, do you? I do <laughs> have one. Except for the fact that he hangs left. I don't know anybody in a relationship is 100% right all the time. I think you're lucky if you're 8% right. <laughs> According to her, it's a little bit different, but she's not me. She doesn't have this mind. Here's, uh, here, here's, my, here's my impression of you, you arguing with your, excuse me, your girlfriend after you're done arguing. Uh, there, that was it. That was my impression. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you want a realistic picture. I'm right all the time. If you want the more realistic uh, picture, it's more of a, once she stormed away, then he'll whisper. You can't see my eyes. Yeah, the then he'll whisper one more thing just so you can feel like he had that last word. What's that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, just whisper one thing at the end when she walks out of the room. She goes, no, she goes, she, she goes and whispers to you, use your indoor voice. <laughs> <laughs> but we're not here to talk. <laughs> Man, with you. <laughs> the girl's gonna. She's gonna call me. She's like, you know what? That guy's right. <laughs> He's right. Yeah. I'd be right, man. It's just I'm. I'm. I'm not right. I'm just cynical. <laughs> well, that's what I like about like uh, along with the book and like I like you said that you have another book uh, coming out, like a bunch of uh, short uh, stories. Yeah, too weird for words. That's coming out here shortly. I'm actually, I'm actually in the throes of arguing with people about the design of it. I had to get rid of my cover artist, and um, so now we're like kind of just cobbling it together. And so we're working on that right now, mm-hmm. and it's a collection of stories. In fact, there's a deleted scene of Flotilla in it. So oh. I think you look forward to that because it answers one major question of Flotilla, which was what happened to his dad. I was go- I, I didn't want to ask it because I part of me thought I might have blanked out when i was reading because i was really tired one day <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, and then i might not have caught it i went back and read the last three chapters i'm like okay whew, i didn't miss it no, I, just, really I just don't gone, I, yeah. yeah i just don't need to know what where happened that to is. him yeah i know and you know keep in mind i mean that's kind of the magic of writing mm-hmm. which is to say that um you have you know a general you know massive cinematic storyline where I was jumping from first person to third person and telling all the story about how the, how the, how the uh, community came to be mm-hmm. and why they made this business model and how Jim got trained and blah, blah, blah. I mean, I, I probably cut about a quarter of that book out between the first draft and the final. I mean, that's how it and always goes. So I have all these deleted scenes. I'm like, oh, snap, what am I going to do with these things? They were really great scenes. I liked them, but I couldn't use them. So that's the magic of short story collections because I can come back in and go, Oh, okay, here's one. So that answers you one question and kind of keeps you going for the next piece. And since um, I had to go back and refer to my copy of Flotilla as well as the short story for writing the sequel, which picks right back up to where the action left off, <clears throat> um, you know, it actually it was actually kind of an interesting period of time to do that. I'm actually, like, in the middle because I think I mentioned last time that I do, uh, like, some short writing, and I was thinking about writing a uh, – a book, and it's not really a book that I'm a hundred percent behind. It's just a mm-hmm. book that I know would be really popular with older ladies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Good chance. <laughs> More than she wrote, huh? You've heard of the Fifty Shades of Grey? <laughs> Meet the Forty Shades of Witch. <laughs> well, 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 what it is is a. Uh, it, it came from a really stupid title that I thought was really funny, so I made a story around it in my head, and it was a right. story of this uh, Latino. Uh, it started with him being a cop, but now as I'm like working on it, he it turn, I'm I'm turning him into a uh, he's 
he's deaf now and he's from the Afghani war and he's just kind of shell shocked. But he's he gets involved and he goes undercover with this like un, like learning about this gang and he falls in love with this girl and he gets into one of those kind of like James Bondy type things. But it's going to be right. kind of gritty. And I was going to call it Pico de Guile. Just because I thought I it was it. really funny. <laughs> like I was, I was sitting there you know what, laughing here, for the I'll longest what, time. You know what? Let's do this real quick. Let's do the Wedge Radio uh, Writer's Workshop right Okay. For 30 okay. seconds. You want to write this book? <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. I'm going to tell you exactly how to write this book. You ready? Yes. First, you need a plot outline. Right? You need a what? Product line? You need a plot outline. Okay, plot you outline. You need to actually know how this book works. Mm-hmm. Okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to open up Word or Google Docs, whatever you want to use, even if it's a piece of paper. And you're going to write four words at the top of that piece of paper. You ready? Mm -hmm. Four words are, and then what happened? Question mark. So, guy wakes up, and then what happened? He went to the store, and then what happened? And then he went back to the, and then he met some girl, and then what happened? And then he fell in love, and then what happened? And then he was fighting some guys, and then what happened? And then he saves the day until you're into the book, at the end of the book. Mm hmm. That's how you do a plot outline. Okay. Um, there are some really great examples of plot outlines on Wikipedia. Do you know where to find them? On, on Wikipedia. Wikipedia. Yes. <laughs> Jinx! <Jinked! laughs> <laughs> uh oh. Here it comes. <laughs> All right. No, I'm serious. You want to yeah. know? It, it, I'll tell you right now where I found my best template of uh, plot outlines was uh, the Breaking Bad synopsis. Oh, really? Hmm. Yeah. Go look at the, go look at like the season a season of Breaking Bad on Wikipedia. And they go like, oh, you know, uh, Hal finds this, and then Walt finds that, and then, you know, Jesse finds this, and then the whole world blows up, right? Mm -hmm. You look at these little late paragraph-long synopsis of each episode until they get to the end of the season. That's more or less what my plot outlines look like. I got one paragraph that explains the action that happens in that one chapter. Mm -hmm. Because I always, whenever I go to the right, I always tend to go straight for, this is like, I go straight for the narrative. Because I enjoy writing, like, weird narratives. Oh, I did the same thing when I was getting started. Yeah, and uh, I was thinking about actually doing these things and getting some more stuff, like longer stuff done. And I was actually going to, like, right before you said the the plot outline stuff, I was going to ask you um, about consistency. And was it ever, like, a, a hassle or was it kind of hard at some point? Or did you ever feel that you were you might have been inconsistent where you might have just kind of overlooked something? Inconsistent, inconsistent in one way. Uh, in story and uh, and pretty much plot. Okay, wait, wait, you lost me. So, I'm sorry, inconsistent in what way? Story and plot. Like, if you ever felt like there was something that was a little inconsistent than something that was stated early on in the book, just because, like, you're so oh, yeah, far no, away from it. that happens all the time. In fact, that's why I recommend I did not write Flotilla with a plot outline. <coughs> oh, but really? I did write Iron Mountain, the next book, which is coming out, with a plot, la- plot outline. And let me tell you, you avoid so many holes that way. Because hmm. otherwise, you're going to go... Oh, well, well, then he's over here on the boat? Why is he over here on the boat? Two pages ago, he was like 30 miles away. What are you doing? With his loose teeth. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, just basically, it's just the mechanics of it. It helps you avoid plot outlines. It's, pretty, it's a pretty simple structure, and that's kind of what I advocate. I hate writing outlines yeah. where you do the Roman numerals and the A and the B and C. That's, 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 that doesn't work. And when, when I was when I was in school, I, I started for film, and I remember they were kind of like some. They weren't really professors pushing for this, but they had a. There was a program that actually outlined everything chronologically for if you're going to write a book or write a story that was out of order. Yeah. And so it had everything on this like weird timeline, and then you can also like have this like what it's going to look like, and you reshape the timeline, which would take it out of chron- uh, the chronological order into what the story that you want to tell in that order. Which I thought was really interesting. Yeah, basically what you're doing is, like, like I think sometimes telling a story out of order is helpful. Like, you notice with uh, Flotilla, we start at the end and then we and then we yeah. begin. Mm-hmm. Um, I do and, like, I do like know, that at, in between the chapters, it, you tell the longitude and latitude of, like, where he's at. Oh, yeah. No, and did you punch them into Google Maps yet? Uh, not yet. I've always been just, like, out of reach of No, that's fine. I'm just telling you, go do it. You'll dig it. Which brings me to a question I actually have. So, I'm What's thinking, a book? No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've never read one of these new finger things. What the hell are you talking about? Printed word? No such thing. No, um... I read scrolls! It's towards the end of the world, you know, okay, the flotilla on uh, the, the sea and everything. So, 
Well, hearing about this, having not read it myself, what I'm thinking right now is Waterworld, but better than Kevin Costner. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you and you and Adam Carolla uh, go to the same place. They go, yeah, this is Waterworld. Yeah, I, 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 Waterworld. No, I told you I never saw Earth. Waterworld. No, no. What, what I mean by Waterworld is I quite literally said something's happened to where the whole world is flooded. And right. tor- towards the end of the film, they're, they're looking for the promised land. You know. He mentions West Covina. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, but, I've, I've read the synopsis. <laughs> okay. But, that, about, but I've never the, actually seen it. Okay. And that's what's coming to mind. I'm like, is that what, what happens in this book? That they're, like, pretty much in a place that has been – the earth is more or less flooded. It no, is very much – wa- Okay. Not at all. No. See, I, I didn't know. And it's hearing the conversation, that's what I'm, he- like, thinking to myself. Okay. Yeah, there is a problem because you – City God floating on the water. Yes, I'm getting, that. like, every third syllable you guys are saying. I'm all sorry. right. I'm sorry. Um, the, no, but, it's not your fault. I'm just saying, you know. There, there is, I there, love Blake for that reason. <laughs> there, there is a thing where, I mean, I know what I'm talking about, and it's you like know what I'm talking about. With a McDonald's speaker, it's just great. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I'm sorry, but like I know no, what. It's not I'm, your fault. I mean, everyone uses Skype. I just that's why you know I get irritated with Skype sometimes. It's not your fault. It's not Skype. Okay. Well, I, I know what I'm talking about, and you know what I'm talking about. The only problem is, I think outsiders might be. We might be a little. Uh, Kind of closing ourselves in and keeping ourselves away from other people, kind of understanding what we're talking about. Well, yeah, right. I know, I and, and I, I don't want to do that either. Mm, My yeah. goal here, obviously, is I want to introduce more people to Flotilla, not less. No, Me too. I, I can honestly say because that's the thing. Like, yeah, I'm outside. I've never read it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm in, very much intrigued to read it now. I'm actually going to want to borrow it from Wedge here to read it. Um, well, well, I'll tell you what. Let me just give you the, the quick and dirty. Okay. Okay. The quick and dirty of Flotilla is this: that don't he skip is on the a nasty. slacker teen living in West Covina. Okay. You guys are in Riverside, right? Uh, Close we're in, to. Uh, yeah. Okay. So he's a teen in the near future, just out of the rehab. He raises fish with his father on an ocean colony off the coast of Los Angeles. He wants to put his troubled past behind him, but the fact they live on a, with several thousand strange and da- dangerous people doesn't help. The drugs and the scams and the problems pile up until one day. When a nationwide emergency happens, his father abandons Jim, the main character, and his sister to handle the people his father has ripped off. Now Jim has to survive his past, or excuse me, escape his past to survive his future. Huh. I'm just reading the back of the book jacket. Maybe you <laughs> noticed that. But um, that's, I mean, like, that's the synopsis of it. This is not Waterworld. Right? No. Waterworld is this thing where all oh, the, mo- the oceans melted, you know, the ice caps melted and the oceans are... That's all that's left, and now you've got this really strange Mad Max type scenario yeah. where he's got gills for some obscure reason so and whatever. Well, no, and the other thing, is not meant to be that. This is meant to be fact based. No, no, and it sounds great. But the other thing that led me to think that thought was when you, you guys talked at the end of the chapters, uh, the latitude, longitude, and Google Map. I'm thinking, mm-hmm. oh, so what he's doing is like, yeah, if you're actually Google Map, it'll tell you where exactly this used to be before it was submerged water. Oh. That's what made me think that. Oh, okay. Right, but, but, don't, but don't take me so don't say take the wrong cool. way. The, the actual land, latitude, latitude and longitude Okay. take you along Jim's path until he lands at uh, San Simeon Beach next to Hearst Castle. Okay. No, that... So the oceans have not obscured Hearst Castle. You know, the yeah. landmarks of today are still there in the future with Flotilla. Okay. Just like the Statue of Liberty. Yes. No, yeah. I'm, I'm very much intrigued. By the way, speaking of which, as long as we're talking about that Statue of Liberty, did you notice, and, and again, this is my stickler for detail thing, my movie nerdness, but you know and I know that if the world had survived long enough for you know apes to evolve to the point where they were sentient, the copper and metal structure of that thing would have been washed away by the ocean millennia ago. <laughs> yes. And I always thought that that, and that always pissed me off, because I'm like, this is not real. That really wouldn't happen. Okay? <laughs> it just wouldn't happen. And that just, I, that, I, I'm sorry. That, that's just me. Well, you may, have, you may still I'm have sad. You may would have still had some skeletal structure left behind, but most of that metal would have eroded away. Well, it's French. Well, it would have run away as fast as it's, possible. You know, that's what right. happens when you leave a car at the coast, uh-huh. right? Yeah. You know, it wouldn't completely destroy it. Or possibly, what if it's on a different coast and that's where it drifted away at that moment? What if because of tectonic shifting, yeah. it ended up on the West Coast and it started out on the East Coast? And blah, 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 blah. Just, uh, that's, you're too far up in your head. <laughs> it's irritating. It was like, the 60s. Give him a break. That's what I made kind of saw there. I, I really tried hard to get the details right. Like all the guns. I, uh, this friend of mine uh, went to uh, Afghanistan is, uh, with the 2nd Marines. And uh, so I had him review all the gun work in there to make sure that if we're talking about an AR-15 or something like that, 
that I'm getting the rifling correct, that I'm getting the calibers correct or something like that, because the last thing that I want is some gun nut to go, yeah, you know, right, right, there, right there, he would have shot with a two two three, and you say that he uses a seven six two, and that really isn't what, it, you know, a two two three caliber, it really do that. I would just yell, go I really worked hard to make constantly. sure the details like that were accurate. Ah, uh, Dale and Peggy's books and guns. <laughs> yeah, well, well, you like guns, don't you, boy? You just go ahead and shoot them, but don't tell me that you're going to have a 7.62 on an AR-15. That just don't happen. Well, coo -coo -coo. That just don't make sense. Well, coo -coo -coo Sorry, you, I, coo -coo. I turned the phone over to my uncle Cletus there for a minute. Um, anyway. I'm glad we're we're getting to know your family. This is great. Yeah, no. okay, well, First Cletus, we heard about Meemaw, and now Cletus. He's a, he's a hellcat. He's out there working a mash barrel. He's going to go ahead and run a liquor, some liquor down the coast, and uh, we're going to go to the flea market and go ahead and buy some new uh, T-shirts. It'll be awesome. Somebody watches a little too much Shiners, don't they? <laughs> Yeah, really. God, I, hate that show. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. It's a, it's a show on like. And you know the other thing that pisses me off shiners. is that Doomsday Prepper uh, show. No, I laugh. Tea I laugh at that Discovery shit. Channel. I hate that show. I think it's funny. As They're though. just perverts. That's all They're it is. Dumbasses. All right, well, then we have to. You know, I hate I hate reality television for a reason, but I just I'm like I hate it so much I don't even want to talk about it right now. <laughs> all right, Dan. Well, we're gonna have to go to a break now. So, uh, do you want to give us like all your information where you can find the book, where you can uh, pick it up, your yeah. website? Twitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Flotilla Online is the main website, F-L-O-T-I-L-L-A-O-N-L-I-N-E.com. And uh, you, of course, can find Flotilla on Amazon. Just search for Flotilla, Dan Haight, H-A-I-G-H-T. As you know, uh, Wedge, my handle is the opposite of love for a reason. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much all I can really tell you. you know, I'm on uh, Facebook, on Twitter. You can reach out to me there. In fact, I mean, like I'm starting to reach out to people on in uh, England and booking radio shows in England because of uh, being on Twitter. So, you know, what it's you a really should interesting do? experience for that reason. When you talk to those people, you should just laugh the entire time and say, "You just sound silly. Oh, Why do you talk like that?" <laughs> well, weird. this guy was really cool. He was, actually, I'll tell you what, man. He was telling me some really cool stories about his dad, who was a, a North Irish policeman. Oh yeah. In Belfast, so he's like, oh, he's like, oh, and I was telling you about my father. He was had to take his life in his hands every time he was upset <laughs> because the IRA. We had to, so we had to sew lead into the curtains because if a bomb went off and the glass went into the living, the the, the, the net curtains would go ahead and absorb the glass. <laughs> like oh, and I'm like okay, so you know when the, you talk about those prepper idiots who have their zombie hideout, that's one thing. But then you have this poor, this nice, really nice Irish guy telling you these horrible stories. About survival, real survival and real trouble. Fighting, fighting the IRA. You know, yeah. You, you, have, you, have, you have people who are fighting a war, or, you know, per se, and then you have people playing Call of Duty. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, uh, that's how I see the difference. Yeah, I'll well, tell you what, man, Obama's going to go take our guns and burp, 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 and just, Oh, God, give me a break. My favorite part is always that's when they say burp, 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 burp. <laughs> All right, th th thanks, Dan. Him. Yeah, go for it. I'm sorry. All right, well, th thanks, Dan, for calling. Um, Yep. When, again, like maybe um, after I read this next one or when I ever decide to, uh, we'll talk well, again. We'll just come then. and talk to you guys again about uh, your horrible life choices. I'm not oh, kidding. Good. I, I do want to borrow that book from you. I actually want to read this now. Okay. So I oh, I yeah. do, Dan, want to read this myself. I'm very much hey, intrigued. Hey, that's fine. And I'll, uh, I'll so, sign you both your copies next time I'm down there. That'd be awesome. Sweet. All right. Thanks, good man. Times. All right, guys. Thanks a bunch. Appreciate it. Thanks, everyone on the show, for having me on. No problem.